Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us at Crypto Lockdown. I don't know who skipped count, how many sessions have we had, um, and how many days have we been in lockdown. I know it's over 100, and we've had quite a few of these sessions going forward. It's always nice to see the, the regulars and to welcome new people. Just a quick one, what is Crypto Lockdown? Crypto Lockdown is purely a group of people worldwide coming together, hearing from the Trendsic team what's happening in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and sometimes one or two other coins, what's happening in the market. And then we have topical discussions, or we just have general discussions, find out from people how's it going with lockdown around the world. We all know it's tough times, it's difficult times. Some of the conversations I've had the last few days is again, it's just getting tougher, tougher as the Toyota ad will say out there. And this session, Mondays and Wednesdays, is to try and bring up some positivity, give people some space to talk and just connect with people around the world um, and stay abreast. And today we want to start something new. So if you've got a positive story, I spoke to a good friend earlier today and their business, uh, the place where they rent, the landlord actually gave them off. I think it was for the first couple of months of lockdown. They didn't have to pay rent. And now they're getting even a further discount on their rent um, as the lockdown is getting longer and longer. Uh, it's always nice to hear stories like that. No cobble cobble or fighting or arguing. Simply just understand. And obviously they've got the means to do it. Uh, to give their tenants the chance to carry on with their business. And that helps a lot. So what we want to start doing with Crypto Lockdown is give a chance to anybody who's got some positive story. Um, tell us what's happening during COVID uh, that has changed your life or that has changed somebody else's life. And let's highlight the positivity of all this nonsense that we are going through. It is tough. Um, people's lives are being destroyed. And I'm sure through a community like this and what you will hear today, we can really make sustainable changes, enable people, connect people, and that will really make a difference while we go through this. So today we've got two guest speakers. Uh, we've got Thomas, and he can introduce himself. And then we've got Karen. Many of you know Karen already. She's the profit queen when it comes to scalping and day trading. Um, I haven't met somebody who can keep up with her on her profit trades. But yeah, she runs Crypto Cares, Hollow Knots. Uh, those of you who know of Hollow Knots who have done the Hollow Knots course, you would have been introduced to Crypto Cares and what they do, helping people, people donate to them. And then they, it's almost like good morning angels that help people who need a little pet or she can explain what they actually do and you can learn there. And then with Thomas, we started, many of you have heard of CBT. Uh, we started our first community uh, project with Thomas and Gerard. Uh, they in, where is it, Thomas? Is it the Nigel? I always get it wrong. Newcastle. Newcastle. Starts with an N. Mm. Um, and he's going to tell us a bit about their growing community project, what they've done and what they're busy doing. And we've taken hands with them. So for, we will put a community down for every 10 elite packages or the equivalent of 10 elite packages through CBT. We will put one hydrophonics or the project that he's going to explain down to you or to you now. We will put a community project that, like that in place and fund it from beginning to end uh, that the people are actually up and running. Uh, who's going to go first? Thomas, I don't know what your time looks like. Are you open? Ladies first. All right, so thank you. Karen, is she ready? I'm ready, born ready. Uh, okay, screen share, enabled. Okay. Uh. That's enabled. You can share your screen and then tell the people about Crypto Cares and what you ladies have started. I'm sorry about this, guys. Tell me when you see this. Uh, there we go. You are live. 
Okay, well, I almost don't have to do the presentation because they have told you guys basically what we are about. Um, but before I carry on about crypto cares, they have also asked, you know, positive feedback and in lockdown how things have changed in a positive way. And, um, you know, for me, during lockdown, I never expected that my network would grow to the extent that it has. And it's, it kind of doesn't make sense if you think about it, that we are confined to, a, to one space. And yet, um, during lockdown, my, my network has grown exponentially. People from different walks of life, different countries, and we've just engaged, we've encouraged, and I've seen how a small act of, act of kindness, you know, can make a difference. Just saying hi or, you know, asking how you are, it really makes a huge difference. So that's my two cents on a positive story. Um, you can take that <laughs> or leave that. And so crypto cares basically, you can see the logo there. And the tagline is passion, purpose, profit. Basically what it means that we are passionate about two things, crypto and people. And therefore our purpose is to use the profit that we make through crypto to serve the community. And the, over here, you just see a basic layout of the crypto cares ecosystem. It's basically um, self explanatory. Oops, there we go. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry. Let me just start again, if you don't mind. Maybe I should get my hand off the mouse. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. And here we go. Okay, so basically what we have um, is th there's, there's two legs to crypto case. We have external charities. That is basically where you can contact me and you can um, apply to have a charity that you support or that you think worthy um, to, to have them added to our database and basically what we do is we create a wallet for them and then we just put them on our social media platforms and people that feel led can donate to them and then the other part is our projects. Okay, so these, these two legs are basically funded in, in two ways. First off, um, donations by the community and then recently we've started as you can see the the investment platform or what we like to call in-house we call it our multiplier okay i'll explain some more on that and then our motivation for crypto is, is so simple really we just um within the community you know, we picked up the, that there were a lot of people in need and we just wanted to pay it forward to help, to educate and in a way just play our part with crypto mass adoption. Think of it like this, you know, there's, there's such a perception worldwide um, that crypto is a scam and, you know, if you get involved in crypto, inevitably inevitably you will lose your money so with crypto cares when we help people and they see the logo they hear the name automatically they they start asking questions but what do you do and then obviously because we help we bring the the conversation to crypto as well so we just you know in our small way always also try to change some perceptions regarding crypto. Um, here's the investment platform, basically how it works. We take 10% of the funds that we have in our wallet and we trade with it. And every month, you know, some of the funds come back and we are at the place now that we are only 
trading with profit. So the initial seed money that we gave um, out to trade with, we have more than doubled it. So what we are trading with now is pure profit. I think when I spoke to Teresa last time, she said overall we are in 150% profit. Um, that's only with our profit money. Seed money is back in my pocket, so to speak. This is just a rundown of the external challenges that we have on file currently. And like I said, if you have someone that you would like added here, please contact me. Um, contact details will be at the end. And there is some of our projects. Now, um, it might not seem as if we've been, <laughs> been doing much, but if any of you have been involved in something like this, you know it takes a lot of planning and phone calls and stuff to get things done. Um, just a little bit of background. No Bear Project is a project that we are doing for a little boy that is severely disabled. Now he's growing up and he's got a lot of needs which uh, his mom cannot meet on her own. She's a single parent. So we are busy working down a list and putting together a project plan at this stage. Um, and then we will do it from there. Meeting Molly um, is our first completed project. Something that I'm very, very proud of. Um, it's not a huge project, but the background is that um, this lady, Margaret is her name, she is in a wheelchair now. She lost her dog. And then when I heard about this, I, I've known Margaret for many years, actually. We've, we went to school together and she's one of those people they get anxious very easily. And having a dog just kind of like soothes her anxiety a bit. So, we took up the challenge to help her find a dog. So we adopted a dog um, on her behalf. Um, she and Molly is, is going great guns. She's happy. And the dog actually is so amazing. I mean, we just adopted the dog and um, it's a cross between a Labrador and a Collie, a Border Collie. And how perfect is that for someone that needs assistance in a way. Um, I wish you could see how this dog actually just naturally um, is in step with what Margaret needs and what she wants. It's, and this dog hasn't even been tried. It's, it's amazing. And then our last project that we currently have on the books is also one for Margaret. Um, we are helping her set up a small business, you know, with something as basic as a computer, a printer, and some consumables. And then um, what we've also managed to do is to get someone within my network to give her some, you know, basic business uh, skills and stuff, skills transfers. So this is what we've been up to um, since we started. And then this is um, the ambassador initiative is something that we launched two weeks ago. And it's really simple, as you can see. Um, we need hands and feet to do what we need done. We need access to your networks, your skills, um, anything you can think of. So at this stage, I would really um, like to ask you to consider becoming one of my ambassadors and um, contact me i'll send you a basic form um where i actually just need on the form i need to know where you are what you can do and you know if you are willing uh, and basically pick up a phone send an email and ask you to help me to to book this um i would love for this to become an international entity currently it only has a south african footprint so i um, want all the other people on the school um if you are from the state or wherever please help us you know to enlarge our um, reach 
the script appears. And there's all my details. If you've fallen asleep during my presentation and you only wake up now, <laughs> you know what, just contact Daryl as well and he'll put you in touch with me. Um, don't think that, you know, there's nothing you can do. Um, you may never know. Even a small little thing like, you know, do making a phone call on our behalf is huge. You, in that sense, you become part of a chain of compassion that can have a huge impact in a person's life. So once again, thanks, Devil, thanks for this. Thank you for your ears, your hearts, your hands, your feet. I'm happy to hear from all of you. Thanks, Karen. Absolutely brilliant. And for those who don't know Karen, I mean, she's a phenomenal woman. Um, she has got, I don't know, what is, how do I say that? Is it cerebral what How do I pronounce that, Corin? Uh, cerebral palsy. Palsy. That's, I always get that yeah, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it actually means that I have uh, brain damage due to um, birth, <laughs> birth defects. There's nothing uh, wrong uh, with your brain. <laughs> well, I almost joke and say, you know what, if you have to have brain damage, mine is in the right place. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, there's absolutely nothing wrong with your brain. Um, it's phenomenal what you do. And so, yeah, thank you for this crypto case and just always be there or being there for everybody else. Uh, so, yes, people, this is... That's Karen with CryptoCares, um, initiated through the huddle knots uh, with Wendy. She's also online here, and Teresa and Michelle and all the ladies that you saw in there. So get involved. Karen, if you can just maybe put your contact details in the chat box and people will pick it up from there. Um, and yeah, if you think, and I'm going to say this in front of us, she knows we joke about it all the time. Um, if you think that you can't trade, uh, and trading is not for you. If I sometimes can get it right and Karen can get it right, and I think she's our leading profit taker, then trust me, uh, you can too. So if you're unsure about hull knots or scalping or trading, don't be fooled. Thanks, Karen. Really appreciate and love you. Um, Thomas, so we're going to put you on the spot now. Uh, for some of those who have heard of uh, the crypto or the community business token, like I said earlier, is we have started taking hands with uh, Thomas and Gerard, and you can go to their Facebook pages. This is basically what they do. They've got a whole farming community going and projects, which is really enabling people with food in their projects or in their communities, and they are growing vegetables that they can sell. So it is, uh, they're actually selling it in some of the leading supermarkets in South Africa already. And this is from a simple, you can see the pictures here. That's at the size of the setup. Um, and they are feeding communities. They are generating jobs. They are selling it into the, the community supermarkets, making an income for themselves. It's, it's fantastic. And like I said earlier, the cost of a project like this is really incredibly well designed and developed. So it's a whole business plan that Gerard and Thomas has developed and they put it down. And from the CBT projects, we will be funding those projects as we move ahead. So the first project is well on its way and some expansion that they still want to do there, but Thomas can tell you all about it. And then we want to start rolling this out to more communities across South Africa and eventually to other cities and countries around the world. So Thomas, it's all your floor if you want to tell the people where you started, what you guys are doing and where we are. Okay. Thank you very much, David, and for putting those pictures up. Uh, my brain is damaged in ways that Karen's works very well. So I wouldn't have managed to do that. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm a pastor of a small Lutheran congregation here in Newcastle. And uh, about five years back when I was sent here, we basically as a congregation went and thought, um, 
we were with a German congregation in South Africa, which is very unusual. So we wanted to open up more to this uh, community and also ask if there are any needs which we as a small congregation could meet. And so we went around and we spoke to to different people already working in the area and um, stuff that came up quite a lot, speaking to school principals and leaders of other NGOs was that there's quite a big need for uh, a place where abandoned babies can be brought. Like if the police goes on and finds a baby next to the street, what do they do with this baby? Most of the other orphanages were, were uh, didn't want to take them because they don't come with papers when they're abandoned. And so the government doesn't pay uh, any money for babies that are not, not documented basically. So the idea was then was to set up a, a small place where these babies could temporarily be taken care of before they would be hopefully returned to their families, if that's possible. Uh, if not possible, then be um, passed on to adoptive families or, or foster families. So we, we have a lady doing that in a, in a small old farmhouse uh, next to the church. So uh, we rented that house for this project and with that also came two hectares of land. So we started farming those two hectares um, in a very, uh, on a very low scale. And, um, but it went well and uh, we made our mistakes and we learned what works and doesn't work. And then with this whole lockdown, it actually really accelerated everything because um, we all of a sudden had business people in our street and in our area getting interested in, in helping. And Gerard was one of them, uh, Dievald's friend. He lived just up the street. And that fits it very well in our purpose or our, uh, if we ask why we're doing it, is actually to, to meet needs in our community and then also help people help and help people so that they can help in a constructive way. Um, as you probably know in South Africa, the rich and the poor live often very far apart. Newcastle is like 40 kilometers, there's a big area, and we are in the more wealthy part of town. And so we wanted to help the people around us to help uh, where it is really needed. And so people like Gerard stepped in and wanted to help. And they bought a bit of business acumen. It's never good to put a pastor in charge of a business. Um, to this whole thing and really get it, got it going. And so um, it's, it's been running well and, and we've been growing it. And uh, that is also helping us to, to do something else is namely to create jobs. You probably know that we have a very high unemployment rate in South Africa, also in our town, a lot of young men, especially who don't have jobs. Um, so what we then already started a while ago is to do training in something called Farming God's Way, which basically teaches people to use what God has given them. For example, leaves and grass for compost or open pollinated seeds and the soil that is there around them to, to really farm. And um, so we had some training like that already. And we saw, and that is my positive story, that all during lockdown, we have this WhatsApp group and the guys were sending in pictures it's only 15 of them that attended the first training of how they were feeding themselves and their families and their neighbors from the stuff which they learned here in February. And um, so what I think we want to do with Gerard and David now is really to, to, to grow this thing. Uh, we've set up a very basic hydroponics project. Uh, we've already done a lot of compost, but now the people are starting to, to buy our compost and we don't have enough so that we can grow that composting business. I don't know if you guys have heard of Black Soldier Fly. That's a fly that works very well at uh, using all organic waste products to create good feed for chickens and pigs and whatever. Uh, so a lot of the things we do is actually recycling stuff. And, and then we, what our idea is to then grow it to a place where we can take interns, especially interns from the, um, from the orphanages in our area, because when they're 18, they have to leave the orphanage. Uh, because the orphanage doesn't get a grant from government for them anymore. So they often end up on the street um, because uh, if, if we have such a high or unemployment rate, etc., cetera, and, and these guys are the last people who are going to get jobs. So we want to take them into these, these things and train them for a year, uh, give them a driver's license, computer skills. We have someone from the church who will do the computer uh, training. Uh, maybe you guys can do cryptocurrency trading. I've got no idea. I would also have to do trading before some training. Um, and then enable them to sort of give them a stepping stone into life. So look at the small babies that are abandoned or vulnerable, and then look at the kids that have to leave the orphanages. 
and um, on the side also create jobs and help people to help in a long term and a constructive way. Uh, that was a, my sermon now. I don't have any questions. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. I really appreciate it. Yeah, when I heard, when Gerard started talking about this project, I've, I've been involved and I've been looking at many projects around the country for quite some time. I was gobsmacked when I started talking to them and saw what they've done and how far they've actually gotten um, with very little support. Uh, and Maybe I can also shows, say yeah. that this whole lockdown thing, before that, like, people mainly went for convenience you go to the supermarket where you can buy everything but now because people have more time and less money they actually they come here and they they enjoy the outing and they buy the vegetables straight from us at a very good price very good product and so the lockdown in that way has helped us and the mm. idea is actually to to generate funds so that we don't have to go fundraising and begging basically but we can be in a position to to uh, to really um fund these projects no, that's exactly it, like Thomas was saying. I mean, and that's what we want to try and achieve with this positive side of things um, during COVID is just enabling people instead of just chucking money into a project, um, but rather try and build projects where they are self-sustained. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Obviously, projects like this needs funding to get off the ground. But the only projects that is really going to make a sustainable difference in our world and our lives is those where the community can carry on with it. We don't want to keep throwing money into a bottomless pit, which is happening with too many projects out there. And that is what Thomas and his team has actually managed to get right there. And when I had my first interview with uh, Thomas and Gerard, the advantage or the the big plus point for me was is the involvement of the community because we started realizing a lot of people is becoming into a begging kind of spirit or just handouts they just want and they will consume the more you give here the community is actually getting involved and they're taking ownership of the project and they're making it work so if the people who starts the project moves out then that project has got a very very good chance of surviving and continuing to deliver a service in the community. So no, well done for that, Thomas, and thank you very much. I've put the uh, email address there in the chat box. If you wanna get involved with Thomas or the Grow Community Projects, let me know, send us an email and we'll get back to you. Also with the orphanage that they're running there, uh, I will connect you with them and we will tell you how and what options or projects is available there. Thank you, Thomas, really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Karen. Fantastic. And I, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. And that is it for today's crypto lockdown on terms of feel good, uh, positive projects and what we can do to make a grim situation a positive side. And you are welcome to contact me at any time if you have a project or a positive story that's come out of lockdown or crypto or COVID-19, um, please come and share it with us. I think we need more positivity going around. So on that note, I'm going to mute myself and hand it over to Alex. I think Alex is going to take us through what is Bitcoin doing. Or oh, actually, sorry, does anybody have questions for either Karen or Thomas? Yeah, well, I actually have a question for Thomas. Um, yeah. Thomas... Do you yeah. guys have um, sleepover facilities in your community? I'm not exactly sure. Do okay, you, mean, you, know, um, you know what? I'll speak to you offline. I have an idea. I'll speak to you offline. It's fine. That's right. No problem. Sure. Sure. Any other questions for Thomas or Karen? Otherwise, we're going to jump into the markets and see what Bitcoin is doing. And uh, Jacques also have an update. And uh, yeah. Can I make a comment to the you last Mark project? Martin. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if you heard something about social return on investment. If, if somebody is familiar with this. Uh, Not so much. Somebody familiar with social return on investment? Not uh, so much, return no. on investment. Shares return on investment is measuring the social impact you're creating with all these projects. 
And you have always to look who is the beneficiary of such a project. There are a lot of stakeholders involved. And if you can calculate your social impact, you can drag some of the, your stakeholders into the project and get a better finance. Often uh, uh, governments or uh, uh, other organizations are saving money because of the project you're dealing with. Mm. And I know there's a, a big community of social return and investment in Cape Town. So uh, I should uh, take a look into this. That'll be brilliant. Thank you, Martin. All right, any other questions or comments? Brilliant, but in any case, if you do have questions, send us an email, Karen posted hers, I've posted, uh, you can get in touch with me and Thomas and Gerard. Um, and yes, we will post uh, this recording on our Facebook channel. And Alex, all yours. Yes, so and let me share my screen here. Yeah, so, I will go here on a bigger time frame.